amidst turbulence in Guyana's political football space, football's world governing body FIFA in October 2014 arrested control of the sport in the country by naming a normalization committee. It was an embarrassing moment for the nation's sport as the Christopher Mathias led executive of the Guyana Football Federation was disbanded. Months later, the Normalization Committee was mandated by FIFA to stage elections, and in November of 2015, Wayne Ford was elected president of the GFA. When I ran for the office of president of the Ghana Football Federation, I came uh, out of the uh, belly of a club. Um, so for many years I was like every other citizen and fan on the outside looking in and reading. For me the most important goal was to uh, tidy up the image of the sport, to bring about an atmosphere of accountability and transparency. To bring about stability. Because I believe many of the goals that we are now achieving were difficult for previous administration because of the, the, the excessive infighting and political instability. As a casual observer of Guyana, I've wondered about a few things, not least of which, its place in this world. Part of the Caribbean, but not an island nation in the Caribbean Sea. Part of the South American mainland, but English is the official language here. Rich in its diversity, embedded in its massive landscape, 83,000 square miles to be precise, this country cannot be defined, except for its name, of course, which literally means land of water. And yes, of course, the seawall. Georgetown, Guyana's capital, is about six feet below sea level. And against that backdrop, the nation is now on the cusp of an industrial renaissance thanks to oil. In sport, however, their most popular exports have been iconic West Indian legends, including a two-time Cricket World Cup winning captain. Cricket resides in the heart of all Caribbean people because it was, re it was really the first time that the descendants of slaves were on an even playing field with the former slave masters. And then guess what? We went for almost 18 years of kicking their butts. I grew up as a youngster seeing 15 grown men leaning to a transistor radio and screaming and because at the time we had no television and all that. It was a small radio as I was born in a remote area in, in, in Esquivel called Bartico. It was a small radio, a whole group of men and they're listening and after that game they're drinking, they're having a good time. So the entire region was conditioned with that pride. And that's what cricket is for us. So a lot of the sporting facilities that exist in Guyana were um, originally uh, cricket pitches. And you know for many, many years, most of the international games that Caribbean countries were playing, they were playing on cricket stadiums. Like the Border Oval, now a relic which hosts the memories of great cricketing moments, Of 67 balls in front of his home ground. And that is a brilliant century. And has seen some of the best players in the game. Shivarai Chandapur, a local hero here at Border. Another top sport in Ghana is boxing. And now, football. I would argue strongly that in Guyana, football is the most popular sport. The only thing that does football is T20 cricket. 
there's no sport that has a larger population in Guyana of players, officials, than football. We play far more uh, football tournaments than any other, far more competition than any other discipline, far more frequent on the international stage representing the Golden Arrowhead than any other. We're far more busy preparing national teams, doing all that stuff, so there is no comparison. In Guyana, football is the most popular sport. Football is the world's most popular sport, and for some countries in the Caribbean, it's true. We have seen the pageantry and excitement of even high school football in Trinidad and Tobago, as well as in Jamaica. Guyanese view this as their northern star. In fact, I should tell you that we've had some of our youth players um, been going to Jamaica um, in recent years and participating in those tournaments. Um, the, the schools or colleges actually request their attendance and they've been able to not only get the exposure, but we would like to say they've been able to strengthen some of those teams. The support from media goes a far way in making schoolboy football products in Jamaica and the Trinidad and Tobago absolutely massive. That is something we recognize. Uh, we are trying to encourage our media person here to be more interested as, as an entity in themselves with covering um, youth football and, 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 and even broadcasting it. Why far I feel that, that we can probably attract more interest, corporate interest and, and, and additional support. Yes, the sport is starting to hold root and it's growing. But on some levels, the expansion of the game will have to start from scratch in schools. Since FIFA's intervention with the Normalization Committee in 2014, the sports governing body has taken a keener interest in the development of the game in this country. Diana has the oldest football federation in the CONCACAF region, having been around since 1902. However, in May of 2022, Guyana became the first Caribbean nation to embrace the Football for Schools program. This enterprise was designed to put football at the heart of social development, sealed by a signed Memorandum of Understanding between the GFF, the Government of Guyana, and the FIFA Foundation. That is us working together with the schools um, through the Ministry of Education to not only um, train teachers, um, who is, you might say, we can use as, as coaches, but also to raise the interest in the sport at the school level. Um, we are even going on from that, and that currently for this current season, we are looking to, to, to start um, tournaments, primary school tournaments and secondary school tournaments. Um, you might very well know that Digicel had a big part in that um, in the last, what, five, six, seven years. However, those competitions were suspended as it became a financial strain. The need to create competition among schools at this stage of the sports development in the country is evident. The game won't be able to survive otherwise. So we recognize the importance and the significance of growing the interest with both boys and girls in the school and at, um, as a result, um, encouraging them to move on to, to club level football. But um, we are conscious that that is where our reservoir is in terms of future of, of Guyana's football and we're working at that. Guyana has also seen FIFA conduct medical courses and workshops. A wide range of topics are covered such as the role of the team doctor, minimum stadium medical requirements, injury prevention, pre-competition medical assessment, concussion and of course anti-doping. However, the biggest impact FIFA has made on Guyana's football so far is infrastructure. And that has affected Guyana's football way of life in a massive way. This is the National Training Center in Providence. With the advent of the FIFA Forward program that our visionary and bold leader in President Gianni Infantino launched back in 2016, we're now seeing more investment being directed towards infrastructure. For a matter of fact, today is an historic day for Guyana's football. It will be the first time that the highest level of senior men competition, the GFF Elite League, will be launched at the National Training Center. 
Hello and welcome to the National Training Center in Providence, Guyana for the start of Season 6 of the GFF KFC Elite League. Glorious conditions under the state-of-the-art lights implemented ahead of tonight's doubleheader. Ten teams, including defending champions Guyana Defense Force, will grace the stage of another highly anticipated season. I'd like to ask each of you here and at home to respect the NPC, to take full advantage of the programs that we'll be running here and to take care of it as if it is your own, because it is your home. I would like to thank the generous sponsors, your investment with huge fuel, countless moments of intense battles on the pitch, exciting victories, heartbreaking losses, and many captivating stories. Beyond this, we will witness the coming together of communities and people of all creed, race, and class of our society. In the end, this is what truly matters. Football unites us all. Let the games begin. Thank you. Slingers back in the Elite League were in cruise control in their first game of the season. They romped to a 7-0 victory over Mondadust, who were returning to the top flight as well. Start off with 7-0 today. Um, this was the team that we played against today. That I understand that that was the team that beat us in the playoff. You know, and to come out today and seven, seven goals and, and especially a clean sheet is awesome. Very amazing facility. You know, I wish um, we did have one like this in Jamaica. But um, Guyana, is at, it's, it's, they're taking their time building and they're growing. The defending champions Guyana Defence Force had it a bit difficult in the opening game but they eventually ran away with a 2-1 win over Santos FC. I'm really unsettled, you know, you always take a moment after the game to get your thoughts together, to see what, you know, you could leave the players on a positive note, you know, so when they go home, they, they, you know, they actually think about it. So it's not really too much you know, to read into at this time. Of all the other teams I've been coaching, and I've been coaching for over 30 years, I found in this unit a cohesiveness, a unity, a togetherness, and I think that is the key to the success. This bunch of this bunch of guys that we have here, it's a different group of fellas. It's the team itself is all about one, and we have a motto: say one, one for all, all for one, and that's the motto that we cry in and out tournaments. The Guyana Defence Force has won the GFF Elite League on two occasions. Not only are they champions, they are probably the best example in regards to administration and sustainability. There are at least three clubs in the league already that, that can administer themselves. Um, two are under government entities, that's the Guyana Police Force Football Club and the Guyana Defence Force Football Club. People see us as being part of the of an organizational structure, like I just said, a disciplinary organizational structure. People see this um, GDF team as being part of uh, a, a, a national governmental structure, right? But the challenges are greater. 
I can assure you that there's support from the Chief of Staff, there's support, there's support from many of the Colonels who, who look over this team, who see this team as their pride. Of course, we've been winning for so long, so they see this team as their, as their, as their baby. I think they're trying, but like I said, more could be done. Joseph Wilson is more than a football coach. He's seen the hills, troughs, and valleys, which encapsulates the Guyana football experience. He's been an administrator, including secretary of the East Demerara Football Association, where he has managed the running of competitions. There are four pillars of football, as I learned it years back. Players, coaches, administration, and medical. I think those four pillars of football are not as strong as it should be after all these years of being established as a federation in Guyana. Ian Alves has been a part of Guyana's sporting infrastructure. He's given his time to the national boards of boxing and track and field. Alves has his background in the military too. In 1993, he received the Master at Arms, and he was also sports officer at the GDF for three years in the 90s. He joined the Guyana Football Federation in 2015 when he was appointed competitions officer. He stood in that post for four years. Then right before COVID-19 changed the world, he became General Secretary of the Federation in August 2019. When I started as Director of Competitions, before I became General Secretary, I recognized that um, there was an atmosphere where um, there was some degree of anticipated animosity expected between the Federation and clubs and associations and so on. And I recognize that one of the things to, to, to um, diminish or decrease that, that perceived animosity was by ensuring that we dealt um, equally and fairly with, with all of our members, that there was no um, chance for any accusation of discrimination, um, that um, all of the tournaments, our tournaments, were conducted in accordance with our rules and regulations. All our administrative matters were done in accordance with the um, Ghana Football Federation statutes. Um, and a, a big weapon for me at the time, I, I, I dare call it a weapon, um, in administering GFF tournaments at that time was the fact that each time a question was raised concerning anything, I was able to refer to either the statutes or the rules and regulations for the tournament. So it never, I never found myself having to defend the situation, but I just referred whoever is asking the question or raising the protest, I refer them to the statutes or the relevant um, rule in, in the rules and regulations. Before the advent of the Elite League, there was GFF National Super League. However, under FIFA and CONCACAF's direction, the Normalization Committee invited applications for Elite Club license. 11 clubs responded, and eight were selected for the inaugural Elite League in 2015. Now that in itself has caused them, forced them to grow, I should say, from where they were initially, like in 2015, to where they are now, in terms of their to ensure they had better administration. Um, there are some key appointments were, were filled in those clubs, that they had a number of teams outside of the senior men's team, um, they were required to have a uh, women's team as well as youth teams. So all of that has forced the clubs to grow from where they were to, to now being better clubs. One time the football is in Guyana is rising and then another time it's degrading because of the level of football we have right now. We have this elite tournament. It's supposed to be the biggest tournament in Guyana and sometimes it is be and then you got to wait for another league come. So when you're in, a, when you're in a, a rhythm and you have to station yourself and wait for a month or two months to get back into the rhythm, it is really be a task. The clubs in the elite league are used as a standard by the other clubs in the country aiming to go professional. The likes of the GDF and the Guyana Police Force and the Slingers have the most financial backing. Because of the financial stability or, um, or, or finances that are available, they have been able to attract some of the better players. 
And of course, if you attract the better players, your performance, it enhances your performance on the pitch. One would think being with a club based at the military as the GTF is, it'll be easier to nurture and cultivate the environment needed to be champions, which they have been twice in the last four seasons. To be honest, coming to the GDF, I thought that was it. But that's not it. Indiscipline is a facet of life. Individuals are indisciplined by nature. Um, I've been a teacher, I'm a retired teacher for the past six years. So I've had the, 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 the full gauntlet of discipline and how it works and how it doesn't work. Right? So um, coming to the GDF, yes, I thought that was it. But I could assure the public that being in the GDF is the same thing like being out of the GDF in terms of discipline and attitude. I don't have to motivate the fellas them. When we come out to work, each day or morning session we have, we just come out with one thing, to get it over and done with it. Because of being a champion, being a champion in the country or being number one in the country, it's a task and everybody will come to try to, you know, try to beat us, try to be where we are, and they will try all kind of stuff to do with us. And so when we come out here, morning or afternoon, it's one thing, get it over and done with it. Winning changes people too. So that brings them more closer together, right? We, 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 we pray a lot, right? We believe in that, right? We believe in training because that's my philosophy. My philosophy is train as you play, play as you train and success comes through training, and success comes through hard work. So these players that you see come to the team and play here day in, day out, they, they buy into that belief. So when they get out there to play, they not only play for themselves, they play for the belief of the coach. So they always go out there and try to deliver based upon those principles, and that's what drives them. So you might say championship team, yes, we won this year, last year, the other year before, but those are the things that drive us. But how can the sport really grow in Guyana? The GFF is in such a unique position where several things have to be done at once, or it can be perceived little is being done. I think the players, they complain all the time, to be honest with you. They complain all the time. And there's much, much more to be done. I mean, I'm in it, like, I, like, you, like you rightfully said. And I've been in it from, from, from a young boy, very young. And, um, I think there's still room for lots of improvement. Yes, they're making strides, or very f small strides. And some players, most of the players and most of the coaches are not satisfied with the kind of strides being made because they think that, you know, that more could be done within this period of time. So to me, like I said before, it's still a work in progress. How long the work will take, or how long progress takes, it's immeasurable. I cannot measure it. Your reaction to that comment um, in terms of how long the work will take and just for you to gauge the temperature that is out there where they are willing to give that chance to you, you being in the seat for two terms already. Right. What's your reaction? I think I agree. Um, that's the first thing with the remarks of the coach. Um, you know, when you're building a, a machinery from almost nothing, uh, the patience that you're asking people to have while that uh, building is taking place is sometimes unreasonable for them because it's easy to see what the future looks like but the steps that one need to take to carefully get to that and the time it may take um, is not always going to be appreciated. So I would say to you that I'm the most impa impatient person in football. I wish that we had five venues reflecting what we have at the National Training Center across the 83,000 square miles. But it's not entirely up to my administration to make these things happen. So, um, but what I will say is that 
the evidence is clear. Um, we are the oldest federation in CONCACAF. I don't know if you're aware of that. And we're only now building the first home of football in Guyana. One of the things the GFF had to tackle from the outset is a lack of qualified football coaches in the country. When my administration were elected in 2015, we discovered that there were only three licensed coaches in all of Guyana. At the moment, we may have almost 60. And one of the qualified coaches, Samson Gilbert. Meet Samson Gilbert. We don't want to waste them. We only got 90 minutes, and so we got to use the 90 minutes. The man who has been in the trenches of Ghana's football for decades, from St. John's College as a student in the 80s to Georgetown Football Academy, where he was youth development officer, to elite club Fruta Conquerors, where he has won two national club titles since 2016. This club particularly, we're always having a nursery coming through. And this group is a nursery that was before. We, we, had, we went to the um, CFU Club Championship um, 2019, and then those players migrated to different entities. And this new group now is coming again. They're inspired and they're inspiring a younger group that is coming and seeing them and want to be like them. Somebody want to be the next Dwayne James or somebody want to be the next Jamar Jackman. And so they have a role and a responsibility. And so those youngsters that's looking up to them is looking to see how they, in all the struggles and in all the different things that they might be facing along the way, how they apply themselves and they're coming through also. So the sky is the limit for us. His passion has always been uplifting young people through football in particular. I started coaching from a very young age. During high school days, the school I attended, we never had really a coach. So all the players that played in various clubs, we came together and based on the knowledge we had from playing in the clubs at youth. We brought that knowledge to the school team, to the college team. So from then, I was always a person that would work with the other players. And then after playing um, my club football, I naturally migrated to coaching because of my love for youth and my activity as a youngster in the game and all of that. Application, application. So what we lacking in skill, what we need? Will. 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 All right? So now we go back to the exercise and we do five minutes more on the other side. So this time on the inside, we're going to open in left side and going away. Samson, who also coached at the national youth levels, is now quality control officer at the GFF and one of the coach educators. One may say he's an evangelist for the sport in Guyana. The love for the game is most important. The love for the game and the philosophy of using the game as a medium to actually reach out to these players in various communities, some less fortunate, some who you realize that the only skill that they might really have and they might really embrace is football. And so as a person that understand that, you really got to, you know, use that to motivate the players and to motivate yourself because you're looking all the time to have that light at the end of the tunnel. And that message is preached in seminars and in courses around the country. And yes, more coaches in Ghana are being certified, but... Um, what I believe is not happen, happening at a rate that, that meets my satisfaction is how fast they are getting that practical experience. Um, and that depends on both um, groups, the coaches and the federation. Uh, many coaches are proud to put their certificates in a, in a frame and proudly parade it before their families and, and friends, rather than finding a club and grabbing a couple of 13 years old and work with them for a couple of months and then see how much they're able to impact their quality, not just to play, but to understand the concept and philosophy of football. Um, that is a work in progress. We as elite club in this tournament, the coaching staff will expect it to be at least a C license by the end of this league. Well, of course, I'm looking forward to it and even achieve greater 
qualification when it comes to coaching football in general. There are nine member associations in Ghana and each of them has at least one academy. Each academy training center is staffed and funded by the Ghana Football Federation. In the long run, it is expected to make a massive impact on the game of the country. And in the longer run, more private academies are expected to come on board. We're very passionate about football in this area and this opportunity with Manila stepping back into the elite give the youth player around this environment and out of Borabis a better opportunity to now come and embrace the club and showcase their talent on this level of football. For now though, the clubs are playing a big part, especially in regards to ushering players into the national program. A process overseen by Jamal Shabazz, who is now in his fourth stint as head coach of Guyana's senior men's team. Guyana has always been my dream job. I, I was never fired. I, I left on three occasions before because I felt the time had arrived where I couldn't make a difference. When I looked at the situation on this occasion, um, the players available, the, the, the facilities that were being constructed, and the spirit of the people, I felt that, um, yeah, because I came back in 2021 for a funeral. And when going through the border market and, and these places, people said, hey coach, you're coming back. I said, no, I came for a funeral. And then the president, Wayne Ford, offered me the job. On to Shabazz, Guyana received the FIFA award for the biggest upward mover in the rankings in 2006. But now with the elite clubs aiming to become professional, there is so much more potential for the national team to become stronger. In the past, the league have not been for long periods. So the, 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 the national team actually train like a club, three, four days a week. But now with the advent of, 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 of the league um, in, 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 in a better situ situation, we think we can allow the players more time to the clubs and we monitor and support their work. So the teams have been performing well and a lot of this, in particular for the men, is credit to now they have their own home, they're training consistently, most of the training was being conducted during the day, now they can train day and night. We have invested tremendously in technology and expertise, uh, we have uh, sports science uh, on staff, we have uh, all the bells and whistles, GPS, the, we have everything, we've really invested. And that investment, the local players are benefiting from it the most because they're here and Coach Shabazz is a resident coach. So he's working with them as much as possible. All that investment is paying off. Guyana recently entered Group A of the CONCACAF Nations League and are confident now more than ever of making a World Cup. And yeah, the 2026 FIFA World Cup in North America is on the agenda. There is not a better time for a Caribbean country to qualify for a World Cup than now because of, of, of the way it's made up, uh, where it's hosted. And that drives our ambition. It's, it's not an ambition built in fantasy. Realistically, when we look at the teams that we have to come up against in the absence of, of USA, Canada, and Mexico. Every Caribbean country should feel, hey, look, we have a chance. Shabazz, who is Trinidadian, believes the Caribbean on a whole has so much to offer to the global game. And he believes that coaching, being a transitional exercise, will assist the sport in the region. When I started coaching national team, I was a young coach. At 16 now, I am one of the coaches that the Caribbean young coaches look towards. They want to see what does he accept? What are the conditions does he accept? You know, I, I am able to pick up the phone when Theodore Whitmore was under pressure, you know, and relate to the pressures that he's undergone. 
and, 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 and Angus Eve in Trinidad and Tobago. Because when I was when I started coaching, they were still playing. Like most football federations in the region, they have conflict with players, mostly about finances and respect. Ford, who was president of the elite club, True to Conquerors, has been having first-hand interactions with players for years. I have managed players from club to national team. Players are, are, are unique. I love them, um, and I know what it takes for them to get good. Uh, I know sometimes um, they, they may not necessarily like any you know, young person because uh, they, they bring a, a particular special gift and talent and, and, and passion for football, but you don't want them to concern themselves too much with the, the, the challenges that the leadership has to, 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 to overcome to deliver what their expectations may be. We need finance to grow because wine is for merry, food is for feasting, but money brings an end to all problems. And as a result of that, we're looking and we're, 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 we're hoping that the government and the private sector and all the stakeholders in the country that could actually contribute to development come on board and realize how important sport is to the development of a country. And as long as, you know, that kind of incremental understanding starts spreading across the leadership of the country, we're in a good place. And I think at this time, um, it is happening. Um, there, there, are, there are many various aspects of development that are government that I might not be aware of need to look at, but I think the, we could see that they're understanding that, look, sport is important, football is important, and how much that could actually bring to the holistic development in the country. Women's football in Ghana is also getting international acclaim. They were on the verge of qualifying for the CONCACAF Women's Gold Cup earlier this year, but they lost out to the Dominican Republic. But their journey in the prelims saw the team getting so much exposure. It was, an, it was a, a fantastic feeling to, to have Guyana, to see the country um, being on, on, in, on every, every social media of CONCACAF, just being there. Um, some persons never knew um, about Guyana, especially comes to the women's team. We've never seen the word Guyana there. So just to have that, and that for me was a, 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 was I say, a motivation, not only for me, but for the girls, for our staff. is very important. If you know that you got things to do in the morning, get up a little early so that you can finish. Pack your bath from tonight. Andrea Johnson wears a lot of hats in the football sphere in Ghana. She loves getting her hands dirty at the community level too. But what she oversees is women's football. She's also the manager of the national team. And I asked her if sometimes it gets lonely for her having to do so many things for the women's game in her country. Um, I wouldn't say it's lonely. I love football. I grew up in football. Um, it's, it's, it is a lot of caps and sometimes people ask me how it is that I do it, but just that I am able to manage my time. Um, my husband is also in football, so I have that, that support. Um, but like I said, I love it. Um, and this is what I do. I do it because I love it. And I also want to see women's football climb or keep climbing in Ghana. The women's game also needs support at the grassroots level and they have begun with competition in schools. We are currently working um, with uh, 
the Blue Water Shipping Company, whereby we will be venturing out into the schools to have the um, female U15, which will be played uh, throughout the length and breadth of Guyana. So there, of course, um, they will move from the, the U15 into the U17 and, and upwards. The Blue Water Under-15 Girls Development League is part of the shift in status for women's football in Guyana. And the Blue Water Shipping Company, in partnership with the GFF, is seeing the creation of an innovative, new, multi-purpose sports educational and entertainment venue at Durban Park. The discussions had begun in September 22, and now the construction has begun. The land that we are building, our Blue Water Stadium was given to us by the government of Ghana. We have a 50 years lease for that land, so these are all tangible evidence of how uh, generous the government of Ghana has been to us. Like the players, the GFF also uh, has a particular inkling of wanting more, <laughs> you would imagine, so we would want more, um, but I believe that, you know, in time we, you know, we will, we will see uh, more resources being directed to, to key components of our football um, uh, space and, and football activities. And so the sport will grow and the plans are afoot for more infrastructure to be put in place. In our contract of agreed objectives with FIFA, we have been approved for uh, four artificial mini uh, pitches, uh, regulation size pitches across uh, the 83,000 square miles of Guyana. We've identified two venues that we will start with the first two and we're looking for an additional two venues to put the, the other two. So infrastructure is a key focus of my administration over the next couple of years um, as we uh, wind down on our tenure here as the leadership in Guyana's football. Football is the opium of the masses. Like most endeavors on this scale, challenges play a central figure to development. And sometimes it's difficult for people from all walks of life to get together to achieve a goal. As a result of that, we've seen over the years some people who are better off, for want of a better term, would look at the football crowd and think, no, nah, there might be some unruly people who are not so cultured, for want of a better term, and so on and be a little hesitant to get involved. But we recognize that and that is why we're working so much with the schools now. So that over time we can show that, look, football is not those unruly um, hooligans that people might have in their mind, but there are people at every level involved in football. different plans. We got plans for uh, semi-pro league and eventually pro league and all of that. But it's one youngster at a time learning this game, um, using the game for fun, using the game as a medium for teaching, not just football, but life skill development. I look at some of the countries in the world that doesn't have the kind of resources, human, financial, infrastructural resources. And they've made it. They've made it to the World Cup, right? So that dream that most of these players that you're looking here this afternoon have is to make it there. That's the, that's the pinnacle of any footballer, or any coach. There will always be challenges, but the group feeling is strong. And one of the most important things about achieving success, we've come to understand, is the group feeling. How does the group feel about itself and the mission? cry of your heart for football in Guyana? I have to come back to infrastructure. 
it it sometimes feel neglected you know as if it's a as if it's a neglect and and why that bothers me and keeps me up at nights is because when you think about the people that young group of men who outside of football they can be doing so many things that we don't want them doing if we were to deliberately and strategically do the 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 statistics to determine the concentration of young men that are more susceptible to bad influence and crime and put in infrastructure there community pitches that are lit that are managed where they can go and burn off that excess energy at the same time honing in their skills at the same time create an opportunity for huge engagement um, with, 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 with key stakeholders the government the law enforcement I think if we were to do that we will we will we can measure over time how that impact youth crime and the key to all of this is infrastructure and it does in fact um, trouble me but I also take a lot of responsibility for it I wish I can get my projects through FIFA faster. I wish I could get the approval with just a letter or an email, but it's not. It's a difficult and, 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 a, and a quite, a, quite, quite a painstaking process. So we will be doing our part as we are doing, but I wish um, not just the government, but key stakeholders understand that inner city communities, football means so much to them. And if you're able to put in that infrastructure strategically, then you can get the best of them because that space is a ready opportunity for you to intervene with the right messaging, with the right uh, programs um, for both boys and girls. And we can push back many of the negative competing interests that are desperately seeking the minds and hearts and souls of our children. Mr. President, thank you for your time. Thank you for having me. Each one, each one, operate in that manner. No failure, no failure, no failure. We can't say right now whether Guyana's future in football is bright. It does have the potential to be. But what we can say is it's ripe for the taking. What a story, however, if this nation turns out to be a leading light for football in the Caribbean. That's Guyana's goal.